This is not good. I don't think he's from around here. I think that's a safe bet. When they opened up that prison in Grant County, I didn't think we'd be getting their runoff. I ain't going back. I'll die first. Damn it! Our back of us probably more than ten miles away. We're sitting ducks behind this car. Cover me. I'm going to try to make it to that ditch so we can surround him. Rick! Hello? Hello? Anybody? What the hell? Did everybody just decide to take a break at the same time? What the hell? What happened here?
Son of a bitch. Jesus! Shit! Son, what did you do? He was going to try to eat us, Dad. No, son. This man is alive. Oh. Grab his feet. Help me get him inside. Huh? Oh, you're awake. We're just getting ready to have dinner. Would you care to join us? Wait, what the hell is going on here? Oh, sorry about my boy. He hit you over the head with a shovel. Huh? What are you talking about? He thought you were one of those... things. Things? You mean those monsters that are at the hospital? Who are you people? What the hell is going on? Whoa, whoa, calm down there, buddy. This was all just a big misunderstanding. My boy didn't mean nothing. How did it all happen? What went wrong? Wait a minute, hold up. Damn, son, you don't know about any of this? I was shot. I woke up at the hospital and was attacked. I came home, my wife and kid were gone whole damn town was deserted. I didn't know what the hell was going on. You say nobody knows what caused it? All oh, media shut down after a few weeks. I haven't heard much of anything after that. If they found a way to stop it, they haven't made it here yet. Those things are everywhere. A good blow to the head will take them out. That's why the boy whacked you with our shovel. Nothing much else seems to faze them. Anytime one wanders into the yard, we take care of it. We try to keep quiet. They'd come after us if they knew we was here. Before they stopped broadcasting, they told us to relocate to the biggest cities. They said they could protect us all there. I figured. I'd be better off taking my chances here. My in-laws live in Atlanta. That's only a five-hour drive from here. That's probably where my wife went. <sighs> Thank God. If they're protecting the cities, then... Man, I was so worried. Oh yeah, I'm sure they're fine. <sighs> well, I need a car if I'm going to get to Atlanta. Want to go shopping? So you're a cop, huh? Yep. I figured you for an honor. After you say you got shot and all. You being the cop. You don't mind my boy and I taking residence in your neighbor's place, do you? I'm not going to arrest you if that's what you mean. Most of the houses on my street had been looted. You seem to be fixing the place up. The Thompsons will probably thank you when they get back. As long as you don't put up a fight over the place. It's not like we're stealing the place. Your neighborhood just seemed safer. We don't figure that we're hurting anybody by staying there. And in my book, that makes it okay. You don't have to justify anything to me. You're keeping your son safe. I'm worried sick about mine. I understand. I appreciate that. You know, I don't think I got your name. Rick. Officer Rick Grimes at your service. And you? Oh, Morgan Jones. And this here is little Dwayne. You're a good man, Morgan. I really appreciate you driving me over here. You've helped me out a lot. It's worth it. 
just to get to talk to someone. If it ain't about cartoons or passing gas, my boy don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Damn. After everything I've seen today, I feel guilty for laughing. Hey, man. It's okay. You've seen some crazy shit out there. We all have. You can't let it get to you. You just gotta keep going. You can't stop to think about it, or you'll go crazy. Yeah. What's up with that? Oh, this? I figured I might as well bring a few along. Just in case. Speaking of which, follow me. I just need to find the right key. Ah, uh, here we are. Wow. Grab a couple for yourself. If whacking those things over the head with a shovel does them in, I'm sure those things will work. Should save you some effort. The shells are in the cabinet below the gun rack. Make sure you save some for me. I'll be right back. Can I? No. Damn it. Don't touch anything. But I'm old enough. Yes, you are. And I'm gonna teach you how to use one of them tomorrow. But until then, they're off limits. Are there enough shells for both of us in here? Well, that get-up certainly suits you. I keep a spare uniform in my locker. I figured if I was going into a big city and they've got a ton of people holed up there, I could get around easier being a cop, so I might as well look the part. Grab what you're getting and follow me out back. I got another surprise for you. You take that one on the left. It doesn't run as good as the one I'm taking, but it'll run better than that hatchback you're driving. If I'm going to make it all the way to Atlanta, I'm going to need the newer one. Wait. What? You'll be safer in one of these things if you need to go anywhere. But, uh... Don't sweat it, man. I'm just doing my job. I can't think of a better way to protect and serve under the circumstances. When things get back to normal, you'll have to give it back, so... Try not to bang it up or put too many miles on it. Thank you, Rick. I can't tell you how much this will help us. Look, you've already helped. What was that? Look out! No, leave it be. It can't get to us in here. You may need that bullet later. Yeah, you're right. We better get these cars out of here before it makes its way around the gate. See you around? Of course. We're neighbors. Keep an eye on my house for me. Will do.
Anybody home? I'm coming in. I'm not here to hurt or rob you. I just need some gasoline. Interested, I'm trying to get to Atlanta to see my wife and son. You ever been to Atlanta? It's not really that far away. You mind if I take this? I think it might come in handy. You ready, girl? <laughs> Let's go! Whoa, slow down, girl! I know you! Might have been in that barn for a while, but you're gonna wear yourself out! Whoa! That's better. Don't want you passing out before we get there. So, you got a name? You know, that's a good idea. Talking about the happiest day of my life will surely get my mind off all the messed up shit I've seen recently. I had just gone into work that morning. I was sitting at the station drinking my second cup of coffee for the day. Gilroy was telling me about the drunk that they had brought in the night before. Then the call came. It was my wife, Lori. Her water had broken not ten minutes after I left. I grabbed my coat and ran home to get her. Got Gilroy to call Doc Stevens so he could meet us at the hospital. I got her to the hospital without a hitch. One of the only times I got used to the sirens on my car. It was a small town we lived in. <laughs> I held on to her hand the whole time. There were some complications and she had to get a cesarean. I was really worried, but everything went okay. The first time I laid eyes on little Carl, I... I... <sighs> you know, on second thought, thinking about the good times makes all this seem much worse. Get out of here! Shit, 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 shit! Bitch! 
Bastards! What the hell is wrong with you? I can get you out of here. Follow me. Stop using that gun. You have the whole city on us. Don't worry about them. We'll be long gone before they get down here. Stay there. <gasps> Got it on the first try. Come on, man. I'm trying to save your life here. What are you waiting on? Sorry, it's just... I've never seen so many of them. Then you're a lucky man. That's nothing down there. Had you gotten 50 feet more into the city before they attacked? You would not be here right now. What? Come on. We must hurry. Wait! No. No way in hell. You're gonna have to. Listen. It's easy. I do it all the time. When we climb down this building, those things will still be waiting for us at the bottom of that building. There's no way out of that one. All these buildings are filled with zombies. Trust me. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Jesus, man. You should have thrown the duffel bag over first. Now you tell me. We've got to hurry before they spread out again. When we climb down this building, be ready to run. Don't worry. We don't have far to go. We're not in the clear yet. But this building is close to the woods at the edge of the city. We've got to run about a block before we get to them. And there's liable to be a few of those things on the way. As long as we keep moving though, they shouldn't be able to surround us. Those things are slow as hell. So you should be able to maneuver around them. Don't use your gun. And don't let them touch you. One bite and it's all over for you. Got it. This way. From this point on is where we need to be careful. Gotcha. It's not far now. Heads up. I didn't even see it. You've got to keep your eyes open, man. Where have you been for the past month? Coma. Seriously? Yeah. I uh, woke up in a hospital yesterday. I... Can we stop here? Is it safe? For a minute. What you said about the city earlier. How dangerous is it? Uh, where are all the people that were here? That? That was them trying to eat us back there. You can't go into the cities anymore. Everyone that was there is dead. The government tried to herd everyone into the city so we'd be easier to protect. All that did was put all the food in one place. Every time one of those things kills one of us, we become one of them. It took a week for just about everyone in the city to be killed. After that, we don't know. Nobody can get in or out. Did you have family in there? My wife? <laughs> My son? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I hate for you to have to hear it this way. We're... We're from Kentucky. But when I was told... People were ordered to larger cities. I figured my wife would have taken my son to her parents' place here in Atlanta. They may not have come, but I don't know where else they'd be. Don't give up hope, man. I've seen all kinds of people that have survived some crazy shit. We've got a guy at camp that actually made out of Atlanta. Did you say camp? Yeah. That's where we're headed. There are more people there. We're almost there. Come on. We're mostly latecomers. People that tried to get into Atlanta too late. Like you. We couldn't get in, so we set up camp here. So... You're just camping out here. Is that safe? Yeah. 
We've got some cars for shelter. And we all take turns keeping watch at night. We figured that if we stick close to the city, they'll be able to find us when the government sort all this mess out. Here we are. Holy shit. Ray! Dad! Thank God. I was so worried about you. It's good to see you, man. Oh my god, Shane! Shane helped us get here. We wouldn't have made it without him. <laughs> I guess I owe you more than I'll ever be able to repay. Rick, please. It was nothing. I had to make up for letting you get shot like that. Man, that wasn't your fault. Besides, I'm fine now. <laughs> Fair enough. Let me show you around. What do you get this time, Glenn? I got some candy bars for the kids, some soap, detergent, a couple of rolls of toilet paper. Ha! Great! You've met Glenn. That's Alan, hounding him for supplies. Alan's wife, Donna, is around here somewhere. They've got twins, Billy and Ben. They're hellions. That's Dale, up there keeping watch. That's his camper. Jim is over there eating. That's Carol and her daughter. Sophia, sitting on the back of the car. This is Amy and Andrea, their sisters. You guys seen Donna and the twins? We're right here. What? Oh, new arrival? This is Lori's husband. My word, that's the best news I've heard all month. Shane, darling, come with me. These two have got some catching up to do. Yeah. I'm so glad you saved this for me. I felt naked without it. Is he asleep? Yeah, finally. He can't sleep anymore unless he knows I'm right next to him. Never really had to slip away from him like that. I usually just lie there and look at him. He's... You've been through a lot. Yeah. I'm sorry who left you here. Lori, please. I understand the circumstances. You thought Atlanta would be safer for Carl. I would have done the same thing. They said people were going to stay at the hospital when they evacuated us. From what you told me, they must have been in the hospital less than a week after we left. You did what's right for little Carl. I'm just glad Shane was around to help you get here. I don't even think I would have found the way down here without him, let alone survived after we got here. Your hand. That's just from the IV. It's not a big deal. Oh. Is he enough up there? So far, that's all we've needed. Luckily, those things haven't come at us in any number. Most we've had at one time is three. Thing is, none of us really sleep anymore. As soon as we hear one of those shots, we're up ready to defend this place. We've only got two guns, Shane's pistol and Dale's rifle. And we've got shovels around the camp that we can hit them with. It's worked so far. They don't come very often. Rick? You're shaking. The past two days... I've been so worried about finding you and Carl... and getting here in one piece. I haven't had time to be scared. Morning, partner. Hey, man. I thought you'd be asleep. 
you keep watch most of the night, don't you? Gwen took over about halfway through, but I don't sleep much anyway. You want to take a shower? The one in Dale's camper still works. It's pond water, but it's better than nothing. Man, I'd love a shower. I'd already kissed that luxury goodbye. Don't linger too long. You and I are going hunting today. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> I didn't see you there. Man, you almost scared me to death. So you're Lori's husband, huh? Yeah. I don't want to stir nothing up. And you gotta understand, this has nothing to do with your wife. She did nothing but talk about you while you were gone. She worried about you. She felt bad about leaving you. But that Shane, he's a good man. He helps out a lot around here. He took care of your wife. But he's not glad you're back. He's had his eye on Lori for as long as I've known them. I appreciate the advice, but Shane's my friend. It was just keeping her safe. I don't have anything to worry about. I wouldn't trust him around my wife. I'll keep that in mind. Crazy old man. You ready? We should get going if we're going to find anything. I'm ready when you are. I'll take those, hon. Scrub them really good. They're a bit funky. Uh-huh. Don't you have some animals to try and shoot? That's the plan. Love you. I love you too. Be careful. Carl, where are you going? Over by Sophia's car. We're gonna go play in the dirt. All right, I'm gonna go wash our clothes with Donna and Carol. You make sure you and Sophia keep an eye on Alan. If he tells you to get in the RV, you do it. Okay, Mama. Don't worry. Amy and Andrea are going to watch the kids. Anything to get out of laundry. You're damn right. Not in front of the kids. Oh, bite me. Stay safe. Always. Oh, I can't wait to see how these things smell with the new detergent Glenn got from the city. That stuff Dale had in the RV just wasn't working. It made the clothes smell better, but not by much. Jesus Christ, will you two listen to yourselves? You're excited about trying out a new detergent? This is such bullshit. Damn, Donna, we're not throwing a party. I'm just looking forward to the possibility of clean smelling clothes. That'd be a welcome change at this point. I just don't understand why we're the ones doing laundry while they go off and hunt. When things get back to normal, I wonder if we'd still be allowed to vote. Are you serious? I don't know about you, but I can't shoot a gun. I've never even tried. To be honest, I wouldn't trust any of those guys to wash my clothes. Rick couldn't do it with a washing machine. He'd be lost out here. This isn't about women's rights. It's about being realistic and doing what needs to be done. Whatever. You think my daddy will come back too? Ain't your daddy dead? Yeah, but so is your daddy and he came back. My daddy was sick. We had to leave him in the hospital back home so we could get better. He wasn't dead. Oh. I miss my daddy. I thought I'd take Lori and Carl down here to her parents and come back. I thought this thing would be over in a week. I didn't want to explain stolen guns to the captain when I got back. Well, if you had seen the place the way I did, you wouldn't have been so worried about the rules. I don't think it'll ever be the same again. Don't say that, man. This won't last. I don't know, man. It looked bad. Well, I'm glad you brought these guns. We just had Dale's rifle and my sidearm. Someone had to keep watch with the rifle at all times, and it's hard as hell to hunt with a pistol. Just about all we've had to eat was canned goods Glenn brought back from the city. Man, what's up with that guy? Risking his life every day to get toilet paper and candy bars? I mean, it's a great help, and he did save my life, but damn. I have no idea. He seems to know how to get in and out before they gang up on him. It's... It 
doesn't even know we're here. Do you think we should get the deer away from it? Do you think it'd be safe to eat? You don't have to constantly keep watch. They're not that fast. Glance in all directions every five minutes will do it. I'm just being thorough. So entertain us, Laurie. How do you meet Rick? I think this job is mundane enough without me putting you both to sleep. Come on, I could use a good nap. All right, but I warned you. Rick's brother Jeff is my age. I'm two years younger than Rick. I met his brother senior year of high school. It started with the brother. I'm all ears. It's nothing like that. We were friends. Jeff invited me to a New Year's party. Apparently, Rick had been made chaperone by their parents who were attending a party elsewhere. I met Rick there. He was going to college for police administration. Everything about him was so interesting. You know what it's like that time of year when you're alone? I hung on every word. Everything about him was perfect. And at midnight, I had someone to kiss. We really hit it off. We kept in touch while he finished college, and I attempted to last more than a year at mine. I didn't. After college was out of the way, I moved back home, and that's when Rick and I got really serious. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. See? Pretty dull. I gotta say, you two look good together. Rick and I are the most compatible people on earth. We are perfect for each other. Come on, let's get back to camp. Look out! <gasps> move, Donna! Ah! Damn it, move! I couldn't! I couldn't! I... You... You saved my life. Don't... Mention it. Mom! I was chopping firewood when I heard the screams and I... <gasps> it's still alive! I don't even want to think about the diseases that these things must carry. I'm not eating any of that deer, and neither is my family. Yeah, I think you're right. You ever seen one up this close? A couple times, but not this long without it attacking me. That's not good. I wasn't going to wait for him to come after us. The camp! Lori! Are you and Carl okay? What happened? I came out of the woods, tried to kill us. It almost got done, but Dale cut its head off. It was still alive. I had to shoot it. Oh god, Rick, it was awful. Let's get this thing into the woods and out of the way. Everything's okay now, hon. Jesus, man! Don't sneak up on me like that! Sorry. I was just trying to get up here without waking anyone up. Well, next time throw a rock at me or something. You scared me half to death. Especially after what happened earlier today. Yeah, that's actually what I came to talk to you about. Oh? We need to move camp. It's not smart to be this close to a city full of those things. It's just too goddamn dangerous. Are you crazy? What happens when the government starts cleaning this mess up? They'll have to start with the cities. They'll find us faster if we stay here. When are they coming, Shane? Tomorrow? Next week? It's getting really damn cold out here, and it's only going to get worse. Not to mention what happened yesterday. It's too risky to stay so damn close to them. It's too risky to go somewhere else. The fires are keeping us warm. There's plenty of firewood in the area. 
We'll be fine. This is the best place to be for the rescue. What makes you so sure we're even going to be rescued? Donna almost died yesterday. What if it was one of the kids? What if it was Carl? Nobody was prepared for this, Shane. You think those girls know how to fight? If we go someplace safer, maybe we won't need to be rescued so soon. I'd rather be able to get a good night's sleep every once in a while than have to sit up at night hoping that the government is going to still act and is still going to find us. No, damn it! We're staying right here! We're safe here! Yesterday is one of the very few isolated incidents. This is the safest place to be. Rick, we can protect these people. We'll be rescued here. If we go hide in the country, it could take them months to find us. We've got to stay here. Okay. If you feel that certain that it's the best thing for us, then fine. We'll stay. But if we're going to try to hold out here, we're going to need more guns. If Donna had been carrying one yesterday, she could have just turned around and shot that thing. Everyone here is going to need to carry a gun at all times. How are we going to find enough guns for that? I'll figure something out. Can you keep it down up there? Some of us are trying to sleep. Hey, Glenn, wait up! What can I do for you, Rick? When you go into town, have you ever seen a gun store or anything like that? No, but I never really go into the city that far. Why do you ask? Well, I'm thinking... If everyone was herded into the cities for protection, there wouldn't have been much looting if everything was being organized by the government. And when everything went to shit, there's no way anyone would have had the time to break into one of the gun stores. Those places are usually barred up, and no one would have been able to get through that without being attacked and eaten. That does make a whole lot of sense. And while I don't know exactly where a gun store may be, I think I know someone who might. Jim, you gotta help us out, man. Do you remember any gun stores close to the edge of town here in Atlanta? Gun stores? Uh, corner of Pleasant at 38th Street. Thanks, Jim. Come on. I have a map in my car. It's got to be here somewhere. No one need guns, but why do you have to go? This is your third day here. I don't want to have to worry about you again. Daddy, please don't go. <sighs> You don't have to worry, son. I'll be really careful. This has to be done so we can all be safe. When I get back, I'll teach you how to shoot a gun. You want to know how to shoot a gun, don't you? I guess. No way! He's too young to shoot a gun. We'll argue about that when I get back. Don't worry, I'll be back before you notice I'm gone. Glenn will keep me safe. How many times has he gone into town and come back fine? I just don't understand why he can't go alone. Why do you have to go with him? How many guns do you think Glenn can carry? Come on, hon, be reasonable. Got it. Be careful. Don't worry, hon. I'll be fine. I love you. I love you too. What's up with Jim? Is he... okay? Well... Remember when I told you we had a guy at camp that actually made it out of Atlanta alive? Yeah? Well... Jim's that guy. At the time you had just told me you thought Lori and Carl were in there. And I was trying to give you hope. The thing is... Jim got out of the city. But he saw his entire family torn apart before he did. Oh. He told the story once. It was like they were shielding him from the army of zombies that had surrounded him. His wife. His sister. Her husband. Between them all, they had, like, five kids. I can't remember, but I think his mom might have been there too. He only made his way through the crowd because those monsters were busy eating everyone else. He said it happened so fast he didn't even realize what was going on until he made his way to safety. Damn it! What? Jim's gun store is five blocks from where I found you. I never go that far in. There's no way we can do this. Follow me. I've got an idea. Come on, this way. Uh, the city is that way. Where are we going? Trust me. You don't want to know. Help me drag it away from the tree. 
Um, what are you doing? Those things don't seem too smart. Yet I've never seen one of them mistake one of them for one of us. And I've seen a couple of those things that I'd think were alive from a distance. So I've been thinking, what could it be that helps them tell us apart? And being close to this little fella seals it. It's the smell. Now I've seen some of them missing half a face. They're up and moving, but by all indications, they're not operating at peak performance. So I'm definitely not saying they're like bloodhounds that can tell us apart by smell. Maybe it's as simple as the fact that we don't stink like them. But I gotta think it has something to do with our smell. We've both got arms and legs. It should be easy for them to mix us up. But they never attack each other. Here, rub this on your clothes, then stick it in your pocket. I think a few pieces for each of us ought to do it. <coughs> Sorry. I just wasn't expecting this at all this morning. Oh, I'm used to the smell of the city, but getting up close like this is a totally different story. Well, if I'd known I'd be doing this today, I wouldn't have gotten out of bed. You've got to give this a shot, though. Don't let anything get close to your face at all. These things are so nasty. I'd hate to think what would happen if you got something in your mouth. Their bites are fatal. And that's just them making contact with broken skin. Ugh, I don't think I'll be rubbing this shit on my face anytime soon. I hope this works. Ugh, you and me both. I'm gonna feel really stupid if we did this for nothing. Sorry about that. You know, if your smell theory is right, I'm gonna be much safer than you. Ugh, I need to scratch my nose. Well, let's see if this is going to work. N nothing so far. <laughs> no. No way. This isn't going to work. It, it just isn't. Glenn, listen to me. It just slapped my hand away. It wanted me to leave it alone. This is going to work. Look at it. It's not coming after us. What a gloomy goddamn day. I don't know about you, but I was getting sick of all that sunshine contradicting what was going on down here. At least this is consistent. You ready for this? Not really. Me neither. God, you do this every day? Yep. According to the map, Pleasant Street is this way. So far, so good. They don't seem to notice that we're talking. They make sounds, too. Maybe they can't tell the difference. We need to go this way. We're almost there. I've never been this far into the city. Christ. It's worse than we thought. Just stay calm. Don't freak out. We're going to be fine. Look, there it is. One second. What's that for? We can carry more guns with it. Oh. That makes sense. So how are we gonna get in? This door is made of wood. We need to hurry. Those things were looking at me while I hacked away at the door. I think they're noticing we're different. We're at a disadvantage not knowing how smart they are at all. What should we get? A little of everything. As much as we can fit in the cart. Make sure we get a lot of ammo. We need to make sure we don't grab anything that won't work in the guns we get. Yeah, that's a good point. You think we got enough? For a while at least. Let's go. Shit, it's starting to rain. <laughs> Hurry! What was that? You think they won't notice that? We're not gonna last long in this rain. Shit! What? What's wrong? Look at them! 
The rain is washing the smell off. Shit! We're never gonna make it! Just run! Come on! Rick! Get the cart upright and grab as many guns as you can! Hurry! Oh god! Oh god! Come on, Rick! Hurry or we won't make it! We're almost home free! Yeah! I think we're gonna make it! Just keep running! Okay. I... I think we've lost them. Let's take a breather. Rick? Oh, thank God. Jeez, oh, oh man, I thought I'd been bitten. No shit. Damn. I guess we really lucked out this time. Well... Let's get these guns back to camp before it gets dark. Yeah. Glenn, please don't tell Lori how close we came. You've got nothing to worry about, Lori. Rick can handle himself. You've seen what he's gotten through already. He and Glenn will be back before you know it. I just... I just wish he had it gone. Damn it! Why did he have to put me through this again? Come back to camp. It's too cold to be out in this rain. Come on. Staying out here isn't going to make him come back any sooner. I'll keep you company. Shane, don't. Gotta stop. Rick is back now. He's alive. And he's my husband. You gotta stop this. But what about that night when we... On the road down here. That night. That night was a mistake. That's it. You're getting a lot better, Donna. A couple of weeks ago, you were all over the place. Now you're nailing almost half your targets. Look at me. I'm a regular sharp shooter. Keep it up. You're not that far off. I'm nowhere near as good as Andrea, but thanks anyway. I think the same could be said about Shane and me. Hmm. <laughs> How's it going? Huh? Oh, hey, Rick. What's going on? I just gave Donna some pointers. She's really coming along. Though I don't think anyone surprised us like Andrea here. Yeah, as far as I can tell, she's not cheating. And the wind can't be blowing that many cans over. Looks like we've got a phenom on our hands. Old boys. It's just pointing and shooting. It's not brain surgery. Maybe for you. Try telling my wife how easy this is. Oh, be nice. Hey, Carl! You ready? Huh? Oh, I'm going to shoot cans. Okay. Thanks for keeping an eye on him. Hey, as long as you're back here to help me up before we leave, I'll consider us even. Nobody better be using my gun. Carl, slow down! Great job, son. You're doing just great. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Dad. Does this mean I get to carry a gun now like everyone else? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, everybody. That'll do it for today. Start gathering everything up. You're all doing great. I think everyone here is capable of defending themselves 
at least at a close distance. You should all be pleased with your progress. Rick and I were a bit worried when we started three weeks ago. You've impressed us both. Let's start back for the camp. It's starting to get dark. Also, before we go, I've got an announcement to make. I think if any of you have been paying attention to Carl on the shooting range, you've seen that he knows how to handle a gun. I know he's young, but just for safety's sake, he's going to be carrying his own gun from now on. I know some of you, my wife included, object to this. But when I said everyone needs a gun, I meant everyone. I will be relying on you all to help me keep an eye on him. He's to keep his gun holstered at all times. If he takes it out once without danger presence, I'll be taking it away. Please, let me know if you see him as much as act like he's going to take it out. Damn it, Lori. Will you stop? He's safer this way. Is he? How can you be so sure? He's seven years old, for Christ's sake. This is not a good idea, but I guess the end of the world means I no longer got a say in parenting my own son. Shit, Lori, you're overreacting. The first hint of him treating it like a toy and I'll never let him touch it again. It's in his holster with the safety on. It's just there for emergencies. Whatever. I wish this place wasn't so damn far from camp. Would you rather a pack of those monsters follow the gunshots right to us? Yeah, you've got a point. Welcome back! You guys all expert marksmen now? Just a couple of us. You could probably use the practice too, you know. You don't need to be here to guard the camp if we're not here. That's true. But I'd hate to come back and find a couple of dead guys digging through our stuff, stinking up the place. Long walk isn't very enticing either. A little exercise isn't a bad thing. All exercise ever does is make you tired. And who wants to be tense, terrified, miserable, cold, and tired? Look at the three of them. Carrying on in front of God and everyone. It's unchristian. So I was being judgmental, if I remember correctly. Hmm. Good one. Lori tells me Donna just won't shut up about you and the girls living together in that camper. She started right after we got back from the target practice a couple days ago and hasn't let up since. Pretty much the only thing she's talked to me about since I let Carl start practicing with us. Donna ain't shown a lick of gratitude for me saving her life. I don't know how Alan puts up with her. Those poor boys. Think about how she's going to be raising those twins. You know, I figure you've earned the right to have two pretty young women keep you company. Without all your camping gear, we'd be screwed. The shower alone has made you one of my favorite people. Come on, guys. I'm not doing anything with those girls. To be honest, I'm an old man. My plumbing ain't what it used to be. It's just... After losing my wife not two months ago, it's nice having them around. They keep the place clean, remind me of what it was like with her around. You don't have to explain yourself to us. It's your business. Donna's just an old housewife who doesn't have soap operas to keep her small mind occupied. Don't let her get to you. Let me take another turn, Rick. I'm rested up. Let's just get back to camp, fellas. I think we've got enough for tonight, even with the cookout. Are you sure? Even with that dear Shane shot yesterday filling our bellies, it'll probably be mighty cold tonight. God damn it, Rick! Will you give it a fucking rest already? I'm sick to death of hearing your shit. I know it's cold. I know it's getting colder. We're gonna be fine. I'm not moving the fucking camp, okay? I don't want to hear anything more about it. That boy's got problems. Dale, this thing is working perfectly. I don't know how we'd cook any meat without it. I don't leave home without my supplies. You never know when something will come in handy when you're out on the open road. That reminds me. I still don't know what most of you were doing for a living before all this shit started happening. Like you, Dale. Did you just travel? Pretty much. I was a salesman for almost 40 years. I spent most of my life behind a desk on the phone. The week after I retired, the wife and I bought the camper and we set out to see America. We'd been on the road for the better part of two years when everything started happening. 
We were at a campsite about 80 miles south of here, coming back from Florida, when the news hit us a little late. We didn't even know what was going on. My wife never left that campsite. After I buried her, I set out for Atlanta. I had some cousins there, and the radio said it was the safest place nearby. Of course. When I got there, it had already been blocked off, and the army was still trying to fight back the hordes inside. I ended up out here. On the way to Atlanta, I found Amy and Andrea broke down, out of gas, gave them a ride. Andrea was driving me back to college. Classes were starting in a few days. I was a physical education major, a junior. As far away as I lived, I should have just flown back, but we always enjoyed our little bonding trips. I was a clerk at a law firm. That job is one of the few things I don't miss. I was a pizza delivery boy in Macon, Georgia. I was swimming in debt and I would have given anything to get out of it. The thing is, now that it's all gone, I'd gladly take it all back if everything could go back to normal. I mean, who wouldn't really? But I was in bad shape. About to lose my apartment, my car. I was going to have to bite the bullet and go crawling back to my parents for help. I never wanted to talk to them again. Huh. Now that I know I couldn't talk to them if I wanted to, I kind of want to. I was a shoe salesman. I ran a store in the mall. It wasn't anything spectacular, but it paid the bills. Well, most of them anyway. Let's just say the debt part of Glenn's story hits pretty close to home. We lived in Gainesville. It's about 50 miles from here. Just like everyone else here, we came into Atlanta a little late. Glenn, Dale and the girls had already set up this camp when we got here. Our car broke down on the way and we walked here. Piece of crap never worked. Mechanic. Can I get some more of that stuff, Alan? Sure, Rick. It's just gonna go bad if we don't eat it. You all know about me. Small town cop from Kentucky. <sighs> I only ever shot my gun a couple times. Never at anyone. Though the last time I was on duty, I sure did try. I got shot. Was in a coma for a while. And woke up to this. I was going out of my mind worrying about Lori and Carl. Shane here took care of them for me. I felt so bad about Rick getting shot. I was up visiting him when Lori told me she was going to come here to stay with her parents. I couldn't let her go alone. It was getting pretty bad out there. Of course, we had no idea how bad it would get. The hospital was supposed to stay open, so we figured Rick would be okay. We were going to go back for him, but we kind of got stranded here. All's well that ends well. What about you, Carol? How about you? Oh, um, hold on. Sophia's father was the breadwinner. I sold some Tupperware out of catalogs from time to time, but... It was really just to friends and neighbors. I wouldn't have considered it a job. My husband was a car salesman. They used to say he could talk anyone into anything. He talked me into marrying him. Talked me into staying with him after... He watched his parents die right after everything started to happen. He couldn't deal with it. He just sort of gave up on life. He, you know, after he was gone, Sophia and I came here to stay with my sister. We figured it'd be worth the drive to stay with someone we know. We never really got into the city, thankfully. Well, I gotta go pee. Does anyone need anything while I'm here? More napkins? I think there's still some left. <laughs> <laughs> no!
Amy, no! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Amy, oh god! What do I do? We've got to try to stop the bleeding. I... I'm sorry. I... She's gone. Heads up, Rick! That wasn't the only one! Lori, get the kids in the cars and stay there! Come on! Jesus Christ! Come on! It's not safe here! No! 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 Come on, there's no telling how many there are! Ah! Shit! Shit! Are you okay? Yeah. Is everyone all right? Y yes, we're fine. Dale, you've got to get her up. Get her inside the camp. Sorry. Oh, Dale. I just can't let her come back like that. I'm sorry I was mad at you. I was so stupid. If something had happened to you, nah, -uh. I know. It's okay. Jim! Oh, Jim, oh my god. You've been bitten. This? This is not a scratch. Just a scratch. She always had something to say. That's one thing I loved about Amy. When we were all too shook up, or preoccupied, or just plain scared, she said something. <laughs> she made us laugh. Lightened up the mood. No matter what. I... I wish you were here now. We may not have gotten along, but I loved her. I love everyone here. We all lean on each other. We all need each other. This is hard on us all, but she seemed to take it in stride. We could all learn something from her. She was a pretty girl. Smart too. She should have been going to college, living her life, being young, being happy. This should never have happened. She didn't deserve this. Nobody deserves this. She came into my life at a time when I was ready to die. She gave me back my will to live, and I'll never be able to thank her for that. I'll miss her. We'll all miss her. It's just not going to be the same. Andrea? Oh.
Do you need more blankets? <coughs> no. I'm fine. This should cool your face down a little. Thanks. Boss of my garage. First guy I saw attacked. He turned in a couple of hours. No one's ever lasted more than a day. Not after being bitten. Guess I'm lucky. Maybe you won't turn. Nobody knows anything for sure. Yeah. If you need anything, just give us a yell. Someone will come get me if I don't hear. Thanks for checking in on him, hon. All the other girls are too scared to get near him and he won't let any of the men touch him. How is he? Worse. If what Dale said about his wife is true, he hasn't got long to go. Dale's wife turned in about a half a day. Jim's going through the same stuff. It's just taking longer for him. He says his whole body is freezing, but he'd almost burn if he touched him. He's still got his wits, though. We'll see. Maybe it won't happen to him. Yeah. No shooting today, Carl. Just watch us and stay quiet. Aw, Dad! Quiet! You don't want to scare our dinner away. Sorry. Good one. A few more of those and we'll be set. Hmm. We don't have to get as much as usual, Dad. Amy's dead. And Jim's too sick to eat. I know, son. I know. God damn it, Rick! It's not my fucking fault! Like hell it isn't! I told you this was going to happen. We're not safe here. How many more people have to die before you realize that? If I thought we could survive on our own, I'd leave the rest of you here and take Carl and Lori with me. We need to get out of here, Shane. Let's siphon what little gas we have out of the cars, into Dale's camper, and go! Today! Right now! Let's just get away from the city. Find some place safe! Think, Rick! We'll be lost out there! The army is going to drive through here any day now, with supplies and shelter, and all of this will just go away! I don't want to risk being out in the country! I don't want to risk being left behind! What are you basing that on? What indication do we have that we're not the only survivors? What was that attack on the camp? Are they hunting in packs now? We know nothing about them! We're not safe! <laughs> Carl! Andrea, if there's anything I can do... No, we can't do that to you. You could start getting better. This would be murder. Donna, you don't understand. I can feel it coming. This, you gotta do this. I. Jim knows what he wants to do. Jim, are you absolutely sure about this?
find my family. Maybe they can came back too. Maybe we could be together again. Goodbye, Jim. Morning. Good morning, Dad. Hey, Rick. Let me know when you're ready, and we'll go hunting. Just give me a few minutes to wake up, and I'll be ready to go. Can I go too? Sorry, son. Not this time. But, Dad... Come on, Rick. Why not let him come along? Because we need to talk, Shane. What do we have to talk about? What the hell do you think? <laughs> It wasn't my motherfucking fault! You son of a bitch! <clears throat> Stay away from him, you fucking lunatic! What the fuck is wrong with you? Lori... I... I... <gasps> Fuck this! Shane, wait! What's happening to us? Bari, are you okay? It's never gonna be the same again. We're never gonna be normal. Just look at us. Shane, stop! Stop! What? what? What do you want? You come to rip my heart right out of my chest? Shane, Jesus! What are you talking about? Be careful with that! Go ahead and rip it out, Rick! I don't fucking need it anymore! Take it! Take it! Shane, I... Can you please just put the gun down? You really did it for me, buddy! You really did it! Oh yes, you did! I'm nothing now, Rick! Nothing! I've got nothing, Rick! No friends! No family! No respect! No fucking life! This fucking world! This fucking godforsaken world of shit! There's nothing for me here, Rick! Nothing! I thought I could make it! I thought I could hold out! Wait till they came and rescued us! They would have brought us nice beds, and hot showers, and fresh clothes. They were coming, Rick! We were going to be okay! We still are, Shane. Everything's going to be fine. I can't live like this, Rick. I thought I could, but I can't! I thought I could! And I did! Everything was going so good! She would have come around eventually! I know it! She would have! What? Everything was so perfect! Until you came back! God damn it, Shane! Stop this! No, Rick! This is the only way! This is what has to happen! 
You weren't meant to come back. You weren't meant to live. Please, Shane. Don't do this. Don't hurt my daddy again. <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Oh, son. It's not the same as killing the dead ones, Daddy. It never should be, son. It never should be.